What's up geeks and welcome to the channel. Practice makes perfect and that is exactly what this series is about. So suppose you are in an interview and you are given an array containing n distinct numbers in the range 0 to n. You are asked to return the only number in the range that is missing from the array. The array you see for example has a length of 10, meaning if we were to store inside it 10 elements ranging from 0 to 10, one of them will not fit and will be missing from that array. Our job is to find that element and return its value. In this case for example the integer to return should be 6 as we have all the integers from 0 to 5 and from 7 to 10 but not 6. Ok so how do we tackle this problem? Well the first solution that may come to your mind is loop over the elements 0 to whatever the length of the array is or make use of the infinite while loop syntax to avoid having multiple return statements as we did here. Then attempt to find each one of these values in the given array, the first element we don't hit is the answer to our problem. Now you may have noticed that in the worst case this implementation can reach an O of n squared complexity. So how do we optimize it? Well, notice how our current algorithm heavily relies on searches. For every iteration we search for an element by value inside this data structure. And the best structure we can use in such scenarios that provides a search by value in constant time are sets. So what we can do is transform our initial list into a set and then apply the exact same logic we had using that set. This way the first part of our code will be linear as well as the second leading to an overall linear time complexity. But what if the interviewer doesn't want us to make use of extra space? How do we tackle this? Well one way to do that is by sorting the array and then traversing the elements in order. The first element we don't find or in other terms the first integer that doesn't match the value of its index will be the smallest non-existing element because the array was just sorted. And yes you are right by doing this we had to sacrifice space for time as our new time complexity is O of n log n because of the sorting and this makes us wonder is there a way to keep the complexity linear and not use space at the same time? Well yes there is, but let me tell you that if you don't come up with this solution during the interview, don't worry, just make sure you are able to make it to the solutions we covered and you should be fine. Ok, to solve this in linear time and without extra space we will need a bit of mathematics. You see when Gauss was 10 years old he taught the world that the sum of integers ranging from 1 to n is equal to n times n plus 1 over 2. So let's bring back our example having n equal to 10. You see if we had all the elements we want the expected sum would be 55. But if we go ahead and calculate the actual sum we will obtain 49. Why? Well because 6 is missing and 6 is none other than 55 minus 49. Implementing this is very straightforward. We first calculate the expected sum using Gauss's formula. Then calculate the actual sum we have. The result is the subtraction of both values. That's it, the optimal solution to the first missing number problem. Ok, after you solve this, the interviewer might decide to scale things up and instead ask you to find the first missing smallest positive integer in any given unsorted array. What's the difference and how do we tackle this new constraint? Take this array as an example. You see the elements stored inside it do not have to be within the n nor array dot length range. They can be anything, even negatives. But the smallest positive integer in general means all elements starting from 1 and up. So you might be asking, if the array does not contain the integer of value 1, then is 1 the answer? Yes, that is correct. Therefore all the arrays you see have 1 as their solutions and these two arrays will have 2 and 6 respectively as their solutions. Now to tackle this problem you can, of course, take a very similar approach to the previous implementation and start by transforming the given array to a set. Then initialize a variable at 1 and keep incrementing it while looking for it in the set until we hit a non-present integer, that value will be the result we want. Ok, same follow up question as before, how can we achieve the same results without making use of extra space? To do that, we will have to notice a specific characteristic linking the problem definition and the given array. You see the fact that the numbers given to us are limited and that we are looking for the smallest missing positive integer means that no matter what the elements in the array are, the value we are looking for must be in the range of 1 to n plus 1. Why? Think about it, if the values given to us indeed range from 1 to n, then the smallest missing positive must be n plus 1. And if there is any other combination of values, whatever it is, then we won't even have the time to reach n plus 1. The smallest missing positive will be found sooner and will be in the range 1 to n. 
Okay, great, we got that. But how do we make use of this information to optimize the solution? To do that, we will have to recall something called negative marking. We already discussed this technique in a previous video in detail, so make sure if you have no idea what that is to check the video linked in the card above. But here you are going to say, wait, how are we going to apply this if the array contains negative values? Well, to do that, we will have to make a first pass on the array and override negative values with something else. We don't care what these values are, they are just useless to us and do not contribute to the answer we are looking for. Now, we can apply the same exact algorithm we know. As a reminder, the negative marking technique will attempt to use the elements stored inside the array as indices. The elements stored at that retrieved index will be flipped to a negative sign allowing us to keep track of the elements present in the array. When we are done going over all the elements, we make a final pass at the array and check which index still corresponds to a positive integer. That integer will be the value we are looking for. The link to the lead code problems we solved today can be found in the description below. Let me know your thoughts and suggestions for upcoming videos in the comment section. And that's it for today. I hope it was helpful. Thank you guys for watching. Take care and I will see you in the next one.